uh, returning to the stage, uh, two of our bona fide experts who are going to give us more of a peek at the ATSC 3.0 roadmap. Uh, Lynn Claudie, the SVP of Technology over at NAB, and Madeline Nolan, the president of ATSC. So we're going to talk about the roadmap, and uh, I guess the punchline is there is no roadmap. This is, um, this is not an Alice in Wonderland case, you know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. It's not back to the future of where we're going, there are no roads. But we don't have a plan, uh, really, to get beyond ATS, well, even to get ATSC 3.0, and this should really be the ATSC X.Y roadmap. Uh, because the system is evolvable by design to, to get you to new features and services uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a structured kind of way. So really all we have to drive into the future is to look in the rearview mirror. And I'm going to start by doing that, uh, by asking the question, what, what if we take the same map into the future that we did with ATSC 1.0? Is that a good idea? Should we push that rock up the, up the hill again? Uh, so this will be a... Uh, a nice uh, blast from the past to, to start out with to tell you essentially let's not do that that's not appropriate in this case uh, and the timing uh, will be different the everything about this transition is is different and requires different thinking so um, those of you that remember back that far the uh, the DTV transition it um, was led both by the government uh, and by the market at least in the early 2000s because Manufacturers and, and consumers, uh, and consumer manufacturers, they didn't have to do anything uh, really. They could buy a set if they wanted to, but they didn't have to. However, on the other side, uh, broadcasters has this rigid schedule from the government to get on the air. You all remember that. Some of you went through it. Uh, it was a phased thing, large markets first, top form networks, then the top markets, and, and uh, played out over, uh, over four years between uh, 1999 and, uh, and 2003. So broadcasters were on the air, but people didn't necessarily buy um, TV sets. We used to put out a press release, NAB, every week, every time a new station went on the air, and this was the charting of that. So you can see there was this big uptick in 2002, and it worked. The stations were, uh, were on the air. It was a lot of money for them. It was a big deal, uh, but they made the transition because they had to to keep their, uh, their license. But if we had some lessons from that part of the DTV transition, uh, we only had this one requirement that was placed totally on broadcasters. And uh, the idea uh, was uh, that was enough, that uh, you build it and, and they will come. And that did not work out uh, for completing the transition or even getting into the, the middle part of it um, because people didn't buy sets and manufacturers wanted to stay in business and they built sets that had names like HD Ready that didn't have DTV tuners in them, they were very popular, but HD capable sets with DTV tuners uh, cost more to make, cost more to sell, and people weren't, uh, uh, weren't buying them. So the solution from the government was, well, we're going to get everyone on board because at the end this was a spectrum reclamation project and they were hell bent to to finish that, that project, and, and they did. So around 2002, that was a critical time, and eventually there was regulatory requirements or guidance that was uh, really placed on all the stakeholders, not only broadcasters, not only manufacturers, but MVPDs and uh, told what you could do at uh, point of sale at retail uh, and how program producers um, uh, operated and made content. Uh, and uh, consumers themselves, you remember the, the DTV coupons. So August 2002, the FCC decides, oh, we're going to, same thing, phase schedule, big sets first, then small sets. We're going to make everyone put DTV tuners in television sets. Uh, and they did that, and uh, we went through it. So that's 11 years of history in, in a nutshell. Contrast that with ATSC 3.0. We do have a little bit of regulatory guidance in that uh, th uh, almost, uh, well, in November 2017, uh, the FCC gave permissive authority for ATSC 3.0. Uh, 
they take the standard, or at least the physical layer of the standard, and say, if you want to do next-gen television, you may do that, and if you do, you have to follow this, uh, this ATSC uh, standard. But you don't have to do that, and oh, by the way, we're not going to give you any extra spectrum to do it, as we did in the DTV transition, where you had simulcasts of analog and digital, and eventually analog withers away, or is, in our case, uh, cut off. Uh, at, a, at a certain point to, um, to make the spectrum reclamation thing work. So with that exception, with that regulatory uh, uh, guidance from the FCC, uh, they actually, it took them a couple years to get around to saying, well, you, you want to change your license to be a DTV broadcaster. There were administrative hurdles to get through. It wasn't until May of uh, last year that you could actually apply for a, a regular DTV license. But that's a big deal to be able to uh, uh, to do that because b prior to that everything you did was an experimental license FCC can take that away at any point so if you want to spend a lot of money and then uh, not have it be permanent uh, or know that it, it couldn't be taken away uh, finance people don't like that uh, so now you can get a license uh, as of uh, six months ago or so and you can compare and contrast what we're doing uh, versus what we did Next gen, with the exception of the, the regulation of the ATSC standard, it's all voluntary. And that means we're not going to have a set schedule. We're going to look at the marketplace for how this evolves, and we better make it something that people really want, because if it doesn't work for any stakeholder in this ecosystem, that's going to stall the transition. So we have to pay a lot more attention uh, to the consumer these days and how they spend their money and make sure that they want to spend it uh, with us. The only things I know about marketing and new technology I've learned from those who are who are in that and it boils down to two things. Consumers abhor uncertainty and they run from it and a product must be ten times better to justify its being twice the price. Now that's just qualitative. Maybe it has to be ten times better to justify a 20 percent <laughs> increase in its price. but. The point is, you got to hit consumers over the head with a two by four if you want them to do something different. Uh, and if it isn't entirely reliable, then they want nothing to do with it. So we have to think about those things now because we have to get on this consumer adoption curve, the classical curve, uh, and it's easy to get innovators this year, maybe even in the next few months, to, to be um, on board and buying a next gen TV set. Maybe we even get into this early majority and, and uh, late majority. But those laggards are, uh, and everyone knows one, you got in one in your family or you work with one or there's someone in the neighborhood. Th completing a consumer transition is the hardest thing to do. Uh, these are people whose uh, reference point is in the past. Uh, they're averse to innovations uh, generally. Uh, they, they tend to be uh, isolated uh, as a group, they tend to have limited resources either in uh, uh, interest level or uh, economic resources. So getting through the laggards is tough. In the DTV transition, government helped us a lot with, uh, with that, with uh, coupon programs, DTV converter boxes, uh, uh, you know, help centers and, and so forth. Um, but it's going to be tough. We don't have to worry about that right now. But we do have to worry about whatever road we're on as we look down it. Uh, Cost is a huge issue, and it's very important, but it's not the only thing that's important because if it doesn't work or it isn't easy to use, it doesn't matter what it costs. People will just not buy it. So uh, my quote from Leon Cotillo, who uh, never said anything else that was uh, of any quality, the bitterness of poor quality remains long after a low price is forgotten, is uh, good advice for us uh, today. Ease of use is also a very, very important thing uh, for us, but we're going to have to pay attention eventually to this category of people that don't want to change, uh, will find any reason not to change, and they're not going to tolerate complexity. They're not going to tolerate something that's unfamiliar. Uh, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Hey, head and shoulders all the way. They had it right, and they're still in business, so uh, probably good advice. And finally, for us, the reception performance has to be really superlative because we are going head to head with all the other distribution media that are uh, entirely reliable. With the MVPDs, we want to be at technical parity with, uh, with them. 
Uh, I'd say with the internet, but that's kind of iffy. People seem to be more forgiving of the internet quality uh, than they should be, my opinion, but it's, it's such a cool medium that everyone wants to say, oh, it works great, uh, even when you see that little rotating uh, dial in, in front of you. So uh, over the air, uh, transmission and reception is still gonna be challenging, even though you've got a better transmission system to, to work with it. It's not perfect when you're out 50 miles in the basement with an indoor antenna. Uh, good luck getting uh, getting reception and explaining that to people as to why some things just um, just aren't aren't possible. So consumers they don't want to change their habits. They don't want to change their configuration of TV equipment uh, just to accommodate new receiving equipment. They want to buy it, bring it in, hook it up to the old stuff they had, and have it work. So uh, that's kind of my lead in for uh, for Madeline, who's going to talk about what ATSC is doing uh, in terms of a roadmap, uh, and ATSE is actually uh, trying to look down the road, and they represent the, the full ecosystem uh, of participants, and have at least started some activities uh, in the in a formal sense, uh, informal slash formal, to uh, see how to move down the road, how to evolve the system, and how to make sure that people are happy and satisfied uh, with the ATSC 3.0 slash next-gen TV system that we're, uh, uh, we're ready to roll out. Uh, I'm vamping a little bit. Oh, there you are. You're over here. I kept looking in your chair, and I knew you sat 